Okay, today we're going to talk bike fit, but we're going to do it not from the studio. Lots of people say you've got lasers, you've got gadgets, cameras, coach. It's not easy for us back at home when we've got limited tools. So I'm going to go through a few points that you can go and check now. Not only will they improve your bike fit, they'll improve your performance, but also hopefully your safety out on the road. Where am I today? I'm back in the hills and the sun is shining. So that makes it a national holiday in Scotland. <laughs> Let's roll the video. Okay, the first point that I want to cover is actually on your cockpit. And it's here, it's the clamp that holds your handlebars. What's that got to do with a bike fit coach? It's got a lot to do with it. Because in the studio, I see lots of clamps come loose. Yes, loose dangerously loose and it's normally on the bottom two bolts if you have a clamp holding your handlebars. Go and check them now before I even carry on with the video. Yeah, get an Allen key and check because what happens is if you're doing hundreds of miles a week, a month, no matter what you're doing, the vibrations on the road, even those smooth roads, now I know not everybody's got such wonderful roads uh, as we do in Scotland, <laughs> but those vibrations and the faster you get and the harder you push, they are creating an issue with the torque on the bolts. And do you check them? Very rarely. And I always find that the bars start to roll a little bit. Now, what I mean by that is that they start to roll forward. You may not have that flat hood position. You may have altered it yourself and given yourself all sorts of hand issues. You look like the Thunderbirds sometimes. But the thing is, if they roll when they come loose, they go forward, don't they? So the reach becomes longer. Yes, you're making the bike too stretch for you and you're unaware. And also they may slip on your favorite downhill with a tailwind with you shouting whippy. Did you get the sheep? <laughs> and that's dangerous. Okay, so go and check now and just make sure that, yeah, I know you've got 101 things on your cockpit, you've got every gadget, you've got a thing full of shit, but it's good shit and you love your shit and you can't get your Allen key to it. Just be careful. That one check could make you faster, could make you fit better, but definitely make your bike safer. Do it now. Now, go on, pause the video. Okay, the next point I want to talk about is your cleats. No, it's not about cleat setup or fore after adjustment. Oh, come on, coach, please share. No, this is a simple little check with your cleats because your left and right foot probably aren't the same rotation anyway, biomechanically. But the thing is, what foot do you click out with when you come to a stop? Now, I can see people <laughs> clockwork going round in their head. Is it my left? Is it my right? What do I do at traffic lights? What do I do? Whatever foot it is, you forcefully pull it out, especially if you're a beginner and you're not that new to cleats, but you will give it more force than you do the other foot. And that's because you're either in a blind panic that the ice cream van is stopped and you're desperate to get one, or you've just got to come to a stop. Go and check that cleat now. Check it against the rotation, and that is the bottom angle against your other foot. If it's different from when you set up, it's because that forceful click every time you ride without checking your cleats has altered it. And even the bolts might even have come loose. Yes, they can come loose over time. Why? Those vibrations that we talk about, those hundreds, thousands of miles. I hear people say, oh, I've not changed my cleats for a year. Have you checked them? Surely you've checked them. Yeah, you've picked out shit and mud from you going on places like I am. Where am I? I'm on what's called Brown Carrick. I'm gonna go down a little bit further and give you a view of Aaron uh, from the top of this climb. But by checking your cleats often and tightening the screws, you will make sure that your positioning is as close as what your ideal position is without it altering all the time. It's one of those things that people just forget about. We can't see the sole of our shoe. Your favorite shoes that you may wear to work and such, when was the last time you actually checked the sole? Okay, my next point is back on the saddle. Yeah, there's something that happens on the saddle a lot. That I see, I almost think, oh my God, how did that manage to happen to you? People will come in, they've got a sore ass, they've got a sore back, and they've got what is termed an anatomical seat post. Now, all that means is 
cylinder, circular. This is a D tube. You may have one of them on your bike, the D. People think, oh, it's aerodynamic. Well, it's to do with shock absorption. Again, if you're on these bumpy roads a lot, a D works better. But my winter bike, for example, <laughs> he has a winter bike. <laughs> he lives in Scotland. He has 364 days of fucking winter. <laughs> but anyway, the anatomical shape means that the saddle is not always straight. People line her up and they line her up with their stem. Don't do that. Line up your saddle with your top tube. Look down the saddle, like you're looking down the barrel of a gun and line it up with your top tube. And then when you tighten it, check it again, because if you over tighten it, the temptation is the saddle will pull out a little bit. And I'm talking about two or three millimeters out. That's you setting up your ride asymmetrical in the first place. You're already asymmetrical anyway, because 99.9% .9 of us are. Why would you do that? And that is putting extra pressure on that one side. So <laughs> there's plenty of people, even watching this video, that have got a tight glute or an overworked glute. They can't deactivate their glute. I love that term. It sounds like a movie, Mission Impossible. Deactivate the glute, coach. Your saddle's not straight. Go and turn your seat post. You don't have to do anything with the saddle, it's in the seat post. And also, while you're there and I've got your attention, when was the last time you took your seat post out, cleaned it, checked it? When you go to your clamp, is it stuck? Then you can't get it out. Please, check, look after your bike. Give it a little bit of oil, a little bit of love. Talk to it. Yeah, don't worry about that. Care for it, okay? Don't shout at it when it goes slower than what you think it should. That's just you. Right, check that saddle. Okay, final point I want to make is about your ass. Not your saddle, your ass. When was the last time you bought yourself a new pair of cycling shorts? So in bike fitting, I talk a lot about angles. I talk about your biomechanics, your limb measurements, how we overlay onto the particular bike. We've got all the dimensions, saddle, bars, stack, all that nonsense. But fundamentally, the two key contact points you've got, your feet and your ass. Your hands generally relate to the length of the bike and how the other two are working. But your ass, and everybody chases saddles. When was the last time you upgraded to a premium pair of bib shorts and you put a padding, I'm talking to you men, that actually was anatomically suitable for you, and you women, I guess women can make mistakes, but it's normally men. I've had men come into my studio and they've got female shorts on. Go and check your shorts. Make sure you've got the right pad. I'm sure you have. But when was the last time you upgraded to a premium pair? There is a difference. Oh coach, have you seen the price of some of them? You know how I feel about spending a little bit more money on shoes, a little bit more money on your kit. It helps because some of you are probably riding around in pads that are older than any underwear you've got in your drawer, any pair of socks you've got in your drawer, and yet we go out and we spend all this money on underwear, and unless you're a little bit like me and you like running around in it, nobody sees it, nobody gives a shit how much money you've spent on it, but your pad and your shorts is crucial. And also, you may come, well, you may get lucky and get a pair of shorts that you actually really love. The pad works for you, okay? I can't give you a list of shorts and pads and say they will work for your particular ass, Robert. Yes, I'm looking at you. <laughs> you've got to experiment, but I assure you, a cheap pair of pad shorts and a premium pair, there is a difference. So that can make a huge difference to your bike fit. Absolutely massive. Okay, you enjoy that? Well, where am I? Well, I'm in the top of Brown Carrick, as I've said. I've got Aaron to that side and I've got the Ayrshire Alps to that side. Oh, the choice, what do I do? Well, I'm actually coming up and down this hill six times today. We're doing a little bit of hill training and I'm gonna be sharing that video pretty soon. You like all this nonsense? Why don't you subscribe? I'm live every Monday, seven o'clock, and I'll take questions from you. Yeah, you could be the star of the next show. And have you got a story to share? Fitness, a great journey, a great adventure. I'd love to hear from you. I'm looking to make new videos whereby I talk to you, the audience. Sounds like fun? Give it a thumbs up if this video has added anything to your cycling knowledge or even a little bit of entertainment. Let me know what you would like to see in future videos as well. I'm open. I'm an easygoing guy, okay? Here to listen and help you. I've got over 30 years of experience in this crazy industry. And I'm going to say goodbye because I can hear the very first car I've seen in about an hour approaching up this hill. 
which is very narrow. Anyway, you take care. Speak to you soon, stay safe, and remember, anyone can train hard. There's only a few of us who can train smart. <laughs>